A very good afternoon and warm welcome to everyone joining our masterclass series on emerging technologies, future of autonomous vehicles. Organized under the aegis of India Israel Forum and jointly convened by the Ananta Aspen Center, Confederation of Indian Industry, and Tel Aviv University. This series is an initiative to promote academic linkages between India and Israel by enhancing technical knowledge and awareness about emerging technologies among scholar students in India. This series is possible thanks to the generous support of Triveni Turbine Limited. We are delighted to have Dr. Mo Kaspi from Israel do this masterclass with us today. He is a senior lecturer and head of the Analytics for Urban Transportation and Operations Lab in the Department of Industrial Engineering at Tel Aviv University. Dr. Caspi's main research interests include the transportation and logistics areas with focus on innovative public transit, vehicle sharing systems, and on-demand transportation based on autonomous vehicles. It is a pleasure to welcome you, Professor Caspi. We are happy to have you with us and are extremely eager to hear your talk. We will begin with a 45-minute presentation by Professor Caspi, followed by the Q&A round. However, Professor Caspi will be taking up your questions throughout the sessions so please don't hesitate to share them in as and through when you feel. To send the questions, please use the Q&A portal at the bottom of your screen. With that, welcome, Professor. May I now request you to start your presentation. OK, so good afternoon to everyone. And uh, I just want to start by uh, thanking Shreya for the introduction. You did it better than I could. And uh, I would like to say thank you for the Anata Center for uh, inviting me to to give this talk and I'm, I'm honored to be here um, the title of the the talk is uh, future of autonomous vehicles i feel that this is this might be a too general or too bombastic uh, title uh, but um, um, i would try in the next 40 minutes to give you my point of view of uh, autonomous vehicles and autonomous mobility and where i see or where in our research, uh, we feel that, uh, that this is uh, uh, going to in the next uh, years and, and, um, and decades. OK, so the outline of um, and my talk is as follows. I, I would start by a, a quick introduction to, to uh, Autolab, to my research group, and, and to what we do to give a, a kind of a perspective to this talk. Then um, I will try to define what, auto, together with you, I guess, uh, what uh, autonomous vehicles are and, and what we consider as uh, vehicle uh, autonomy. Um, and then I will uh, introduce the, what I see as the opportunities that uh, may be brought by uh, autonomous mobility. Following, we will discuss the, discuss the barriers and, and challenges for uh, why the implementation of uh, autonomous uh, based uh, um, transit and, and, and logistics services. Um, then um, in the remaining time, I, I will try to give a, pro a projection that is based on estimates made in the literature um, for when the era of uh, autonomous mobility will arrive and in the time that uh, will remain, I will introduce uh, some examples for solutions for, for the coming years uh, that we've been um, studying in, in, um, um, in our research group. So um, as uh, Shreya kindly said, um, please feel free to, to ask questions uh, during the presentation. Um, if some of the things I say are, are not clear enough, then I, I would be happy to repeat and explain and to generate uh, a discussion as, as um, the talk goes. So please uh, feel free to just ask questions when, whenever uh, uh, you feel like. So um, again, just to give a perspective about uh, where I come from and what, what type of research uh, we do in the group. So um, uh, my research field is operations research. So I, I don't know how many of the students that are listening are familiar with, with this term or with this uh, field, but basically operations research is the application of analytical methods to 
help make better decisions. Uh, so from a, an operations research uh, point of view, um, we, are, we, we can study different types of uh, systems uh, with different types of, um, let's say, um, resources, constraints, uh, business rules. And, and our aim is to try and, and, and generate models that will allow us to uh, analyze systems or services or even machines and um, make better decisions. And, and if you want to sum this uh, up in a short phrase, so the American Society of uh, Operations Research has, has done this very nicely with, with the following uh, expression. Uh, operations research is, is basically the science of better. So we are trying again to devise uh, tools, analytical tools that uh, will allow us to make things uh, uh, better. Typical questions that we ask uh, are, for example, given some service requirements, uh, what is the best economical way to design or operate uh, a system? And maybe from the other way around, uh, given that we have some uh, limited resources or a, a, a limited budget, what is the best we can do um, in terms of the quality of service that we provide the user. So what is the best way we, we can um, design or operate a system so as to um, um, provide uh, the best quality of service uh, possible. And the goal, at least um, uh, in, in, uh, in my group is, is the following. We, we want to develop models and algorithms that uh, we lay decision making in transportation and logistics again apply optimization tools and and uh, 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 analytical models in order to uh, make day-to-day -day and strategic decisions regarding the operation or design of transportation and logistics systems uh, better and and the types of tools we're using in, in the group uh, uh, varies from data analytics to mathematical modeling um, exact optimization heuristics and uh, con when considering uh, complex um, systems with uh, many interactions and, and stochasticity then uh, often uh, we also use uh, simulation models in order to represent uh, uh, such systems so I'm, I'm taking the this opportunity to to introduce to you my my current uh, group and uh, which I'm very proud of. And again, uh, to sum this, what we're doing is uh, we're um, gen generating or formulating mathematical models, simulation models, and and, and uh, studying optimization methods for the design, management, and operation of innovative uh, transit and logistic systems. Currently, uh, one of the main questions uh, we ask is what can be done with emerging technologies. So you, I, I will discuss today specifically uh, vehicle autonomy, but you can think of uh, vehicle connectivity, electrification, uh, um, advances in um, uh, data technology and other innovative technologies. How can these be utilized today already in order to um, design a new or to improve existing transit and, and logistic systems. Most of our models are, are uh, data-driven and uh, we're using uh, big data that uh, is becoming uh, more and more available all over the world. It, it can be geospatial data and, or other types of data that are really relevant for the operation or design or the, of the systems or understanding of the um, um, transportation network or uh, uh, the population in, in order to, again, better understand the, the demand or other characteristics of the uh, city uh, that may be uh, helpful in, in better understanding and then and designing services. And, and whenever uh, is possible, uh, we try to, uh, to conduct our research in collaboration with cities, uh, uh, technological uh, companies and startups and so on. Um, uh, and furthermore, when, whenever possible, uh, 
we love to take whatever we develop and, and test it in the field, not only in, in the lab, and, and to see how uh, or what kind of impact uh, the models that uh, and the tools that we developed uh, can actually have in uh, reality. So the title of the of the talk refers to autonomous vehicles and and just to to give a perspective because uh, I guess um, any one of us can can have a, a different definition of uh, autonomous vehicles and I, I will follow the uh, the definition of the Society of Automotive Engineers um, that have defined a level of automation. So, so the starting from level zero, which means no, uh, no automation. This is what we mainly see uh, in the streets today. So um, this is classic driving in, in which the driver controls all aspects of, uh, of the vehicle or the dynamic driving task. Level one is, is a, a case where one aspect of driving is, is controlled autonomously, for instance, braking. Um, and this goes on. So partial automation, uh, automation is, is, is considered when at least two functions uh, of the driving are handled autonomously, for instance, uh, blinking uh, or turning the wheel um, or braking or, or, or many other functions that the driver needs to, to, to do. Um, are actually done uh, autonomously by the vehicle. And then we go to, uh, I guess, uh, what today is, is uh, referred to as automated uh, uh, driving. This is the case where um, the vehicle can handle all dynamic driving tasks, uh, but it can do it only in very specific environments. And uh, typically some intervention is, is required by um, by the human being uh, seated in the car. Level four is already the case where um, we can say that uh, the vehicle can handle all dynamic driving tasks um, uh, in most environments without uh, intervention. You see here in the figure, it, in the vehicle here, there is only one uh, user sitting in, in, the, uh, in the car, is sitting in the back doing something else completely, but we still have a, a wheel, a steering wheel and, and, and the brakes and, and other things that may allow him to um, intervene in certain scenarios or in certain uh, environments. And, and the level five, and this is what I will uh, be referring to when, I, when I'm saying uh, uh, vehicle autonomy or full, or full autonomy, is the case where we can actually take out the brakes or the steering wheel or everything uh, else that uh, you can uh, imagine that uh, a human uh, driver would be needing in order to control the car. We can actually put it aside because uh, this will be uh, done automatically and 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 um, and seamlessly by by the uh, vehicle under all conditions. Um, this includes also uh, route planning. Uh, so basically. Uh, um, Imagine a scenario in which a human being walks into the car, he talks to the car and says, I want to go to a certain destination. And, and from that period on, uh, everything that involves the movement of the vehicle uh, until this destination, again, including the decisions regarding the, the route to, uh, to be taken, is done by um, the vehicle. So again, when I'm saying vehicle autonomy, I'm referring to this. Um, if you uh, you read on, on, on the net or, or the news, you, you see some um, uh, publications uh, every now and then about uh, or promotions about uh, uh, testing of autonomous vehicles. Typically what you see is level three or, or in, in a better case, level four, there is still some time until uh, level five becomes a reality. And this is a part of what uh, I'm going to discuss uh, today. And when will this happen? So up to now, if anyone has a question or a comment, uh, I would be happy to, uh, to respond. Okay, so um, in, in this, 
um, I'm referring to a, a very old uh, phrase by the American president uh, Hoover. This is about a hundred years ago when he was uh, running for presidency. One of his um, uh, main promises was to put a car in every garage. So one of his great promises to the American public was uh, we will make things uh, so much better so that every, every um, a citizen will have his own car in his garage. And my question is uh, for you, is, is this what uh, we are planning for in the, in the era of autonomous mobility? An autonomous car in every garage. And, and with this question, um, um, I, I, did not, I did not say this in, uh, in the introduction, but I'm an industrial engineer. And as an industrial engineer, Typically, when we analyze uh, factories or production lines or services or systems, one of the, the main key performance measures we like to, uh, uh, to analyze is the level of utilization. So you think of a private car, and think of the, the cost of, of buying it and, and the cost that relates to uh, insurance and, and regulations and so on. It's quite an... Uh, an, an expensive resource and anyone has a guess uh, what is the utilization rate of a, of a private vehicle so in the us for example um u.s drivers spend about 73 minutes to, uh, uh, driving daily this means that about 95% of the time, so something like an hour a day, this means that about 95% of the time, vehicles are parked. So again, you have this highly um, um, expensive or, or costly uh, resource that most of the time it just stand there, stands there and, and does nothing. And when we're thinking of an era of autonomous vehicles, if we are to shift to a, a case where, uh, yes, uh, vehicles are autonomous, but we, we did not think, change anything in the way we think about uh, mobility, meaning uh, most of the vehicles would be uh, privately owned, then basically we haven't done anything because we will have this highly expensive uh, resources that most of the time are, are not used. And moreover, when they are not used, they are, they are taking a, another very expensive uh, resource, uh, mainly in, in, in city centers, which is uh, the parking space. So when we are thinking about autonomous mobility and, and, and thinking of uh, um, how these vehicles should be used uh, when we reach the point uh, in time where most of the vehicles are uh, autonomous, we should also uh, try to, to shift the, the paradigm and, and think of a, a better ways to use uh, uh, these vehicles. And, and the point is that as vehicles are autonomous, when one person ends uh, uh, the, his journey, a vehicle can straight away uh, go and provide service to um, another user. It can relocate, it can drive uh, uh, with, with no passenger uh, on board to another uh, location to serve another user. So this opens the door for two types of sharing. First of all, the same resource can be sequentially uh, shared by uh, other um, uh, users, one after uh, the other. And if we are thinking of uh, um, relatively dense areas of uh, um, the urban environment, then the same vehicle can also be used to serve different users at, at the same time. So there is, uh, two ways or potential ways here for um, sharing, which we need to think how, how to, how to ad advance and promote in order for the shift uh, to autonomous uh, driving or driverless uh, vehicles would have an impact. Now, um, think of um, many uh, cities around uh, the world today and how congested they are. Um, and think of the a period in which people will not need uh, to have a, a driver license or a driving ability in order to sit in a car and, 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 and move. Actually, this will open the door for 
uh, more people to be using uh, uh, vehicles. Think of children or think of uh, the uh, older people who are, uh, who for some reason uh, can no longer uh, drive by, by themselves. These people will also have access to uh, autonomous mobility. So with not only that the population is growing, but uh, uh, with this uh, autonomous uh, abilities, then mobile uh, autonomous mobility will become even more accessible, which again uh, uh, pushes us to, to think of ways to share mobility. Uh, otherwise, our cities will, um, will become more and more uh, congested. Um, so again, uh, thinking about autonomous vehicles and autonomous uh, mobility, the opportunities are, 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 um, are great. First of all, there is, a, there is a, 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 a good chance for better utilization of the vehicles, because again, when I'm done uh, using the vehicle, someone else will be able to, uh, to use it. Um, so for instance, think of commuters who drive from them, their homes to their uh, uh, work locations. Instead of parking the vehicle at, uh, at the work location and, and, and have it uh, idle for the entire work day, the vehicle in the meantime can go and serve other people. So again, um, there is a high potential here for better utilization of these vehicles, which may actually, uh, if we plan this right, may uh, lead uh, to having less cars on the roads, reducing uh, uh, congestion and, and, uh, and so forth. Um, autonomous vehicles, due to all of the um, technology that is installed in, uh, in them, may be actually, um, may actually be able to, to better synchronize. So if you think about the movement in, in uh, intersections uh, with traffic lights or without traffic lights, the way that uh, vehicles maneuver uh, between lanes on the highways and, and, so, and so on, um, with autonomous, uh, autonomous vehicles, these things um, might actually be done much better than um, with human drivers, which may allow as a result a better utilization of the road network and, and maybe driving with uh, shorter headways and allowing uh, for vehicles uh, to, to, drive, to drive in higher speeds than uh, they normally do. And at the same time, again, due to uh, um, uh, the different sensors installed and to the AI and, and, and the ability to communicate between cars and uh, between cars and infrastructure, it may actually be uh, safer. And, and if you examine the um, rate of, uh, even though uh, every now and then there is a, a news uh, article about uh, an, a horrible accident that happened with an autonomous vehicle, um, if you analyze the uh, extent of driving, so the, the number of kilometers uh, driven and accumulated number of uh, kilometers uh, driven uh, by today by autonomous vehicles um, and, and, and count the number of accidents, then the ratio of accidents is actually much, much lower than uh, with uh, human drivers. Um, so actually with the understanding that, that this is coming from, from, again, from the point of view of management and, and uh, operations research, this has attracted a lot of research in, in uh, recent years and uh, different studies uh, relate to different aspects um, that need to be taken into consideration while planning um, shared uh, autonomous vehicle services. So just to give you uh, examples, um, how to estimate the demand in such services, um, uh, analysis of the uh, of the fleet, uh, where it should be positioned, what should be its uh, uh, its size, uh, or what types of fleets to uh, uh, to be using, how to do the the traffic assignment or, or um, the vehicle assignment. Many of these uh, uh, vehicles uh, are already electric, so when you have this. Uh, um, moving autonomous vehicles that can perform 
uh, multiple tasks sequentially, uh, it may not have, uh, if it's busy all day, uh, it, may, it may not have a sufficient uh, a battery to uh, fulfill all the tasks. So you need to also consider when and where charging will, uh, will take uh, uh, place and, and how to do this uh, smartly such that the vehicles are available uh, at, at the high peak uh, periods and, and at locations where they are needed. Um, um, autonomous vehicles will, will idling, uh, we need to uh, park also. So where to do it? Uh, and inside the city, in the outskirts of the city, uh, where to allocate a, a parking spots that are uh, designated for these shared autonomous uh, vehicles. Um, uh, while thinking of a service, then, um, as you know, in, in many cases, due to uh, commuting or uh, other uh, mobility patterns, the demand uh, for uh, mobility in, in the city is typically uh, unbalanced. So at some per uh, periods of the day, uh, uh, most of the, the uh, users would like to go from certain areas to other areas, and maybe in other periods of the day, this changes. And this, uh, again, generates some imbalance in, in the uh, vehicle di redistribution, which we also need to, um, uh, to plan how to, how to redistribute the vehicles in order to be in the right place at the right time. With autonomous vehicles, at least the redistribution part, not the planning of it, but the, the, oper the actual uh, uh, movement of the, of the vehicles is becoming simpler as compared to existing services uh, or vehicle sharing systems today, where we need to have staff that relocates the vehicles uh, uh, between different positions in order to handle um, the demand. Um, so again, the, the uh, topic of shared autonomous vehicle services has gained a lot of attention in, in recent years, uh, focusing on, on multiple uh, aspects. But the one thing that is, uh, is general to all of these studies is, is the very simple assumption that we are already in a world where all of the vehicles are moving fully autonomously. And in that sense, a lot of this research is, is actually relevant for, uh, no, certainly not for today, but the question becomes uh, that, that follows is for when is this, this relevant? When will we actually operate um, uh, fleets of uh, autonomous vehicles in, in these uh, shared services? So the question is, is the future really here or when is this going to happen? And, and actually um, for us to see um, a, a considerable a portion of the vehicles or all vehicles on the road uh, uh, becoming autonomous, the world will have to uh, overcome some uh, very important uh, challenges or, or barriers. So some examples, first of all, the price. Uh, currently, um, um, autonomous vehicles are equipped with uh, multiple, uh, uh, sensors and, and devices that are, are used in order to make sure that the vehicles remain on the road, that they follow uh, cars or, or uh, you know, that they move in, in, in a safe uh, way. And all of this technology to get, uh, together today installed in a vehicle makes the, the vehicles very expensive. So there is still some time until uh, the technology becomes a standard and, and there is a, a considerable drop in, in the costs of manufacturing these vehicles in order for, for uh, these vehicles to become affordable. Again, not, maybe not for each uh, um, potential uh, user uh, uh, to privately own a vehicle, but for uh, companies or, or municipalities to be able to deploy these vehicles in, in, um, uh, in some uh, sorts of uh, sh um, shared uh, mobility services, 
the resources should be um, much cheaper than they are today. Road safety. So there is still a concern about uh, the level of safety that is guaranteed with with the current uh, autonomy um, capabilities. Um, some argue that th this also relates to the fact that uh, uh, autonomous vehicles that are uh, on on the road today um, are uh, driving in and. Um, in or let's say they're, they're sharing the, the network with human driven vehicles and a part of the difficulty comes from from the interaction uh, an autonomous vehicle will better in, anticipate the uh, movement or um, uh, behavior of another autonomous vehicle as compared to uh, behavior of a, a, a human being so so um, it concerns both uh, uh, human beings in uh, in other vehicles driving in, in parallel, but also pedestrians and, and other types of um, uh, vehicles that are, are, are moving on on the uh, on the network. In, uh, and this is especially important inside the cities, uh, where you may have uh, multiple types of uh, uh, vehicles crossing in intersections and in roundabouts and, and so on and and pedestrian crossing and uh, so this is still a, a a huge concern regulations so there are multiple types of regulations that you 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 can think of that still needs to be sorted out and to be configured at the national level or, or uh, even uh, globally um just to give you an example for instance uh, insurance um when i'm uh, boarding a, a, an autonomous vehicle as a service if such a vehicle makes an accident who is liable uh, for it who who uh, who uh, will, will have to comp compensate or or, uh, or um, how will you de define the um, re the reliability uh, here there are regulations that uh, relate to movements on on the transportation network that need to be um, um, figured out. Uh, Cybersecurity issues. This this is a main concern. So as um, autonomous vehicles are going to be fully controlled by uh, by computers, there is a, a high concern that. Uh, I would be sitting in an autonomous vehicle and someone else remotely, maybe from an, a, another side of the world, will hack into the vehicle and will kidnap me or drive the, the vehicle into a wall or something else. So the anything that is relate, related to both safety and security needs to, to be highly robust in order to uh, allow for uh, people to, to be able to to trust this uh, technology. Data privacy, again, this is also another uh, aspect. So who controls the data? If I'm ordering a vehicle every day and uh, from one location to another location, uh, on some computers, on some servers, this will be stored. Someone will know that I'm moving from one location to, to another, maybe um, uh, revealing my uh, mobility patterns. Um, this needs to be somehow secured in order to guarantee the privacy of the uh, user. And th there are a lot of questions that relate to this. Morality. So, so this is something that maybe comes from a, a completely different perspective. Today, a, a human being that drives a car, um, if uh, he reaches a certain point where an accident is inevitable, then typically, uh, we take decisions that are uh, uh, mostly our, uh, our instincts. And, and for a computer that recognizes uh, that an accident is going to occur and, and there's nothing else that uh, can be done, we need to define what are the actions that need to be uh, taken or how, how to, uh, should, should we turn the left, uh, the wheel, uh, the steering wheel left or right? Where, where should the vehicle turn or should continue going straight? I'll give you an, an example. Let's say that uh, a vehicle 
or the computer realized that an accident is, is, is going to occur no matter what is done, where should it go to? Should it turn towards uh, the old lady or a little child that is on the, on the other side or a person or a, a, an animal? Where, where should it turn? So uh, while with human beings, we do not think about it and, and something will happen uh, typically by, by an instinct with computers, we have the way to, to define this in advance and, and to program this in a way. So someone needs to take these uh, moral decisions. And um, this is also uh, a, a big field for, for discussion, how, how to plan these uh, autonomous uh, entities that are moving in, in the, um, around us. Um, and maybe finally another challenge is, is relate, relating to uh, both psychological and sociological uh, barriers. So um, even if we guarantee to people that they, they sit in the car and the car is 100% safe and will take them from one place to, to another, uh, there is some barrier that relates to, to um, to our ability to trust uh, this te technology. Um, there are many experiments that are, are being uh, done where uh, users sit in a car and they're being told that it's fully autonomous even though someone else drives, drives the vehicle um, um, and they're not unaware of it. And you see the reactions of people to every turn and every break and, and uh, an autonomous vehicle will not drive uh, exactly like a human uh, being drives. And there is some psychological barrier that needs to be passed here and uh, for us to be able to um, feel comfortable to sit in, in, in such a vehicle. Uh, same, uh, there are sociological barriers, how um, the population in, as a population reacts to these vehicles that are um, um, moving on the streets. A, 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 as an example, um, I was uh, a, f a few years ago, I, I participated in a, in a field experiment uh, that used um, uh, autonomous shuttles uh, in a small town in, in uh, Switzerland. So they had this uh, fixed route on, on which these autonomous v uh, shuttles were driving and uh, um, uh, citizen had had the opportunity to board these vehicles and to experience a ride with autonomous uh, shuttles. And one of the things that they encountered uh, during the experiment is that children would jump in front of the vehicles to see how it reacts, how it stops. So um, in the beginning, the, the vehicles were designed such that if any uh, obstacle uh, becomes visible, it suddenly stops. So think of, of this scenario where you have uh, people sitting in the vehicle and, and somebody just raises a hand or something in front of the vehicle just to make it uh, stop. Um, if this, is, this happens a lot, then this is uh, highly um, um, annoying for the users. And then think of how uh, people or you as drivers would react if uh, uh, someone would play this game with you. Uh, most likely you, you would find a way to, to move them uh, out of the way with an autonomous vehicle. Uh, it sounds reasonable that it would be designed in a way that um, in no conditions, the vehicle will move forward towards a pedestrian. Um, so just one example for uh, uh, sociological aspects that need to be uh, handled. Um, so when, and, 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 and now I'm, I'm, um, I'm waiting for, uh, I would be happy if any uh, uh, one of the students would, would give his projection. When do you expect to see autonomous uh, vehicles on the roads, but largely, um, or, or even the era in which the entire mobility is done autonomously? If any of the students wish to answer the question, please raise your hand so I can allow you to talk. Avanish, you've been allowed to talk. 
Uh, yeah, so I think like it can start by 2030, but it'll still take time to reach full coverage by like around 2040. Because I uh, asked a question in the uh, chat before also that yeah, uh, what I, are the main challenges for the level for automation, which should be the one which, you know, brings the whole automation, automate, uh, autonomous vehicles to the, to everyone basically. And so, I'd ask, is it the, the problem is the uh, network infrastructure, the ML AI thing or the trust in the technology? So thank you for this question. And, and for the rest, I'm sorry, I did not reply. So, but uh, it's hard to see the, the Q and A while, while, uh, uh, presenting so I will try to answer uh, some of these questions as you go but if as, as I said in the beginning if you want to raise your hand and, and talk during the presentation please do so so um, if you ask me with regard to the challenges I, I just mentioned I think it's a combination of all of them it's not only that the ML uh, or AI would be uh, tuned better to um, um, you know, to, to deal with uh, extreme scenarios and so on, but uh, it's it's a mixture of all of this. It's making the vehicle uh, less ex the, the vehicles less expensive. It's handling all of the re re regulations issues because someone would need to take responsibility, or firms, or, or municipalities, or uh, private people will have to take responsibility for uh, things that occur. Whilst today, if I drive my car. Uh, to work and I make an accident, it is clear who is reliable for it. Um, using, and you know what, if you take a taxi and the taxi makes an accident, it's also clear, uh, assuming that the driver made a, a mistake, who, who is responsible for it? But who is reliable for an accident that is made by a computer? Uh, so you need to somehow figure this out before you can uh, use this technology uh, largely cyber security is 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 a is a really issue and a real concern um, the same way people are concerned of the ability of uh, hackers to uh, to control uh, um, airplanes while they're in the air the same would happen here so you are sitting at at the back seat you have no control of of the vehicle and someone may have the ability to hack in and and do uh, with the vehicle, whatever uh, he wants. This is something that needs to be uh, solved um, very well before you get the, the trust, not only of the, uh, the private users, but of, uh, of the governments, of, uh, of the policy makers in order to, to push this through uh, in a large scale. Um, same with, uh, these are just example of aspects. There are, uh, there are others. All of these will need to be uh, to be figured out one way or another in order for for uh, for this to be you know for to allow for a, a large scale implementation of uh, autonomous vehicles. But uh, yeah, it was it was a good question. I, I hope I, um, uh, I I was able to answer uh, this. If anyone has else has other questions that relate to to this aspect, then now is is a, is a good idea. But so. Uh, the first uh, speaker gave a, a, a projection for 2030 or maybe a bit later. Someone else wants to, to try and give, uh, give it a guess? Uh, sir, actually, I, I have a question. Okay. Uh, so like you just said that um, most of these autonomous vehicles uh, these days are uh, electric. So, uh, they, so what my question is that uh, in an electric powertrain, uh, are current autonomous cars able to tune or change uh, the powertrain as per performance? Like, are they able to, is the ECU able to change the uh, gear ratios or tune the car in a certain way as per performance? I, I, I believe so, yes. I, 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 I have to admit that um, this is not the, the main, uh, my main interests, but I read about it every, every now and then and, and and from what i understand yes like with with uh, uh i would say was typical or, or was the, the same as with the uh, existing electric vehicles but now um also uh, um, they have the autonomy ability
Okay, so so uh, I I will move uh, uh, forward. So um, if you read, the, you follow the the, the different pub publications or, or uh, news interviews and so on. This is something you often hear in two years. So if if you read interviews with uh, uh, the CEOs of these technological companies or, or these big car corporations, they say you often see this term in two years. And actually one of the things that has been uh, consistent in, in these interviews is in the past 15 years or, or so is that they say in two years. Um, but uh, so they have, they have their own motivation to, to give, uh, I guess, their, their stakeholders the, uh, the feeling that this is, this is coming soon. But as I mentioned before, there are a lot of barriers and, and um, let's say more realistic projections uh, are that uh, commercial uh, level five vehicles uh, would be here around the end of the decade. But um, for uh, autonomous vehicles to become a, a dominant player in, in the, uh, uh, let's say, on the network or, or to, to have a relatively high penetration rate. This is sound projections are uh, three to four decades. The day uh, in which all vehicles on the streets will be autonomous, I, I, I don't know. Um, I'm guessing three, four de decades or, or, or even uh, more. Uh, and this brings another uh, interesting uh, uh, question, uh, and that is, okay, so we have these uh, already quite advanced uh, technologies that are constantly developed. Uh, and we have this understanding that uh, the era of autonomous mobility is um, still far away. Uh, what can we do with these technologies today? What can we do in the transition period until the era of autonomous mobility uh, in order to utilize these te technologies. And in the, um, the time that I have uh, remaining, this is what I will try to answer with one or two examples that we do in our research. So, so the question is here, how to design and operate innovative transportation and logistic services during this relatively long transition period from human driven to autonomous uh, uh, mobility. And I see here three uh, operational uh, scenarios. So um, one is we have vehicles uh, that can, uh, or we have the autonomous technology, but still these barriers that I mentioned before, we can implement large scale services on separated infrastructures. And, and I, I will give an example uh, for it uh, in the next slide. Another thing we can do is operate in restricted areas, areas in which uh, it is safer to, um, uh, to operate or to move autonomously. And this opens the door for uh, interactions or how to plan the, the uh, entire uh, transportation network to take into consideration areas in which you can drive fully autonomously and other areas in which only human human movement or, or human drivers are, are uh, permitted. And another thing that is a, a direction for, I, I would say, research in, in the coming years is, is everything that relates to uh, mixed traffic. So we've mentioned the, the, the AI that will be installed on these uh, uh, computers, or on these vehicles, sorry. There is a difference if you need to train them to interact with um, autonomous vehicles or all that, or assuming all the other vehicles are also autonomous or um, um, the scenario, the, the more uh, uh, reasonable scenario, which is in a long, uh, a considerable uh, long period, there are going to be autonomous vehicles on the road along uh, human driven vehicles. And, and then there are questions of how to operate uh, these mixed, uh, this mixed traffic, uh, uh, simultaneously, do we generate separate lanes? Do we um, uh, give some kind of uh, uh, right to uh, autonomous uh, vehicles and, and so on? So, in the next uh, 
10 minutes or so, or uh, the time that is left, I, I will discuss, uh, I, will, I will describe two examples for, for these scenarios. So one is the personal rapid transit. Um, Shreya, how, how, long, how much time do I have left for, for the talk? Uh, Professor, actually, we're running a bit over time since okay. it's the Q&A round. But okay, I, I will take another three minutes yeah, and then sure, uh, sure. If, if it's okay with you and then uh, I'll take questions. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so um, the idea of uh, personal rapid transit is actually here for more than 50 years. That you have these uh, like uh, horizontal elevators where uh, uh, people uh, go in, in stations, select the destination stations, they enter these small uh, vehicles and they drive them um, non-stop or, or uh, directly to the uh, um, uh, destination. This, uh, this, this type of uh, system is here for more than, uh, or the idea is more for, uh, than 50 years and it sounds attractive, but actually it, today it's only implemented in, in, in five uh, um, cities around the world. And the reasons are both the cost of uh, uh, in implementing or, or the infrastructure costs and also the impact it has on the uh, urban uh, landscape. And what we, we did in one of the studies that uh, uh, hopefully will be published soon is, is ask the following, can we couple the existing uh, autonomous technology um, with existing infrastructure in order to provi provide this uh, a PRT like uh, services. So imagine a tram system uh, in uh, um, an average uh, European city. You take out these uh, uh, long vehicles with uh, high capacity and instead install on the same in infrastructure these small, flexible, autonomous vehicles. How effective would it be? Would we be able to uh, improve uh, performance or quality of service provided to the users? by doing so. Um, I will not go into the details of the system as, as we are done. So this is one example of a study that we did is to, to try and see what, it, think of a, a regional train. What happens if instead of moving those large trains on, on, on the same infrastructure or rail, we would move uh, these small and, and uh, uh, very flexible autonomous vehicles to provide station to station uh, or direct uh, um, services between origins and, and destination. Is it, is it doable? Can we actually improve performance like this? How much would it cost and so on? So this is an example for, for one research that we have conducted. Um, I, I will skip the, the main uh, outcomes because again, uh, we're out of time. Another example that we've studied is, is uh, semi-autonomous transportation system. So this um, uh, again relates to uh, the scenario or, or, or cases in which in some regions of the network we can uh, drive completely autonomously and in others we need a human driver and there are multiple uh, um, settings in which um, we can do it. Um, either um, a, a driver that enters a vehicle in certain uh, regions of, of the uh, uh, network or a, a system that combines both autonomous vehicles and human driven vehicles that communicate and uh, allow for uh, people to transfer from one to the other. I wanted to, to focus on, on this example, the multi-layered personal uh, uh, transit system, uh, but um, I guess we're running out of time. So if anyone is interested, I, I would be happy to provide references and, and to discuss this offline. Um, sorry, uh, so just to, to complete uh, uh, my talk. Um, technological advancements in vehicle autonomy bring both many opportunities and, and, and uh, challenges. Um, the era of autonomous mobility is, is, is still far off sight, but nevertheless, um, we can and we should utilize the existing advancements in, in these technologies to design already today uh, new transportation and, and uh, logistic services. And uh, this naturally opens um, the door for many interesting uh, research questions. So there is a lot to do and a lot of interesting things to do uh, in the very near future. 
זה, אוקיי, so sorry for uh, taking the time, but um, um, please, if you have questions, then open your mics and... Thank you so much, Professor, for that extremely interesting presentation. I'm sure students have thoroughly enjoyed themselves. Uh, would you like to take up the remaining questions from the Q&A box? Yes, yeah, so I think it would be more efficient if, if they just open the, the uh, microphones and, and ask and we, we, we can uh, discuss. Sure, I could otherwise pose the questions to you till the students warm up to raising their hands. Okay. Uh, so a student has asked whether Tesla will fall under level four. Uh, yes, I, I would say so. Teslas are, are, are currently, I, I, I would say somewhere between level three and level, and level four, yeah. What is your opinion on the trolley problem? How do you suggest the problem is approached while creating an autonomous vehicle? Uh, Need to, I need to think about it. Uh, I, uh, Kevin, I, I will get back to you. Then a student has asked in which level object event detection response include? I, I, honestly, I don't know. I, I, um, um, I, I, can, I can provide you references to, um, to the relevant uh, literature. I'm, I'm not sure, I don't want to say level three or level four in order to, uh, I, I believe already in level three, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure about it. Mayank has asked, shifting to EV, we have to give up the variation of experience of performance. We get in different company vehicles since most of them will use similar technologies. So how are they going to overcome this? Do, uh, do you mean EV or AV? Do you mean moving to electrical vehicles or to autonomous vehicles? He has mentioned EV in his question. Okay. Um, I, I don't see how the, uh, in most cases, the, the electric uh, uh, technology is, is seamless to, to the user. So I'll assume he meant uh, AV. Um, I assume that while designing the service, uh, there are different um, uh, policies that may uh, impact the, uh, the way that we experience uh, the service. For instance, do we allow users to share rides or do we provide only taxi-like uh, services? Uh, the size of the vehicles um, um, May, may generate a, a different uh, uh, experience. Uh, think of uh, a COVID uh, or a pandemic period, driving in these, these smaller vehicles and, and maybe sharing uh, uh, the ride only with a limited number of uh, uh, users may give uh, a different feeling than boarding a, a large vehicle that has many users on board it. I'll club the next two questions. Okay. Uh, what are the measures will the companies take in future to reduce the cost of autonomous vehicles and who will be liable if an accident happens from autonomous vehicles? So, so for the first question, um, as with any new technology, think of your cellular phones. What were the costs uh, for the technology that was available 10 years ago? What were the costs then and what is now? So uh, typically, as, as the technology advances, the current uh, uh, technology is becoming uh, uh, cheaper. With the questions that relate to rel uh, reliability, then uh, this is uh, what, exactly what I, I, I tried to, to say during my talk is, it's still a question, an open question. And this is one of the, the barriers that need to be uh, fully resolved. Uh, who is, who is uh, in the end responsible for uh, an accident? Is, the, is it the, I'll give you an example. Is it the service provider? Is it the company that manufactured the vehicle? Is it the company that manufactured the chips that are installed in the vehicle? Is it the, the person who uh, um, 
programmed the AI, there are uh, multiple uh, targets that uh, um, may be relevant here, and this needs to be, uh, again, fully resolved um, for, for, uh, for, to allow for uh, people to, to know that uh, someone will take responsibility if, if, or will be responsible if, if something uh, that is unplanned happens. Thank you, Professor, for answering all those questions. And thank you to all those who have joined us today and sent their questions. Once oh, so again, let, let me just conclude that I'm, I'm sorry okay. I, I, did, I did not uh, have the, the time to answer all of your questions, but um, this is my email and uh, uh, the website of my group. And if you're in, interested or you want to have an uh, offline discussion, then, then you are more than welcome to send me an email and we can find the time uh, to communicate later on. And thanks again for inviting me for, uh, uh, for this talk. Thank you for taking out the time to join us today, Professor. Hope to see you all in the next masterclass. Thank you.